called prolapse is demonstrated in this case. On entering the room, ensure that the senior sister has been informed and the anaesthetic registrar, paediatric registrar, senior house officer and ODA have been called to labour ward. The next step is to check the cord for pulsation gently while at the same time ensuring the midwife is attempting to auscultate the fetal heart. The insertion of the catheter prepares the patient for caesarean section and also theoretically as the bladder fills it may displace the fetal head upwards and so reduce cord compression. The position of the patient should also be altered. This can be done in two ways tilting the head of the bed downwards or turning the patient over so she rests on her elbows and knees. The next case involves the management of postpartum hemorrhage. You must summon help urgently. This includes the senior house officer, the anaesthetist and midwife involved with the delivery. Assess the need for an episiotomy, for extension of an existing episiotomy or for bilateral episiotomy. This can be considered throughout the management for shoulder dystocia, particularly if one is unable to access the fetus to perform the internal manoeuvres. Using the internal hand, apply pressure to the posterior aspect of the anterior shoulder to adduct the shoulder. This may be done simultaneously with pressure on the posterior clavicle. Occasionally, symphysiotomy may be useful. This allows the pelvic outlet diameter to be increased, allowing delivery of the shoulder.